Uh, I think those are assumptions that you are making um, and you're putting words in my mouth. There is an absolute abundance of news here in Canada. Welcome back to Moose and Loose. My name's David. In today's top stories, we've got a couple of votes, including the main one, the non-confidence vote that was put forward. We've got a bunch of poopy pants liberals. We've also got Justin Trudeau getting heckled and humiliated all the way down the street among a bunch of other things. So let's jump into this. First off, posted by Larry Brock, we've got this. This is a vote to stop the uh, quadrupling of the carbon tax, as you can see voted here by uh, Pierre Polyev and Larry Brock. It was defeated by uh, Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh. We've got another vote here. This was the important one, the uh, non-confidence vote to kick Trudeau out of power. As you can see here, we got Pierre Polyev and Andrew Scheer voting yes to kick out Trudeau. And obviously Trudeau said no, Jagmeet said no, and Blanchett said no. So Trudeau stays in power. Next up, we got this. It says Canadians will face fees for a UK visit starting January 2025. That's right, folks. If you're going to go visit another Commonwealth nation, you're going to have to pay. <laughs> Justin Trudeau's absolutely ruined the Canadian passport. It used to be this golden thing. You could go anywhere with it. I guess if you go to Egypt now, it's a major problem. The UK now, you're going to have to pay, I believe it's 100 and was it $59? I have a feeling that the UK is going to be getting quite a few less uh, visitors from Canada because that's absurd. Next up, we got this clip here of Justin Trudeau getting heckled and humiliated while he's taking photos with people because only Justin Trudeau would do that. For all the dead Canadians because of your lies and corruption. You're a liar, you're corrupt, you need to resign, you're a failure, everybody knows it, no one trusts you, and there are millions of Canadians who've had their lives destroyed because of your lies and corruption. We want justice! We want justice for the dead! We want Look at this guy. He's just smiling and waving while that guy's unloading that on him. That's unbelievable. He just... This guy. justice for all those dead Canadians because of your policies, your lies, the lies and corruption that keep us in power. So notice here, this is Justin Trudeau right there. So he stops, there's some people here. So, oh, let's get some photos, guys, while this guy's saying war machine behind me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at this guy. Just get those photos, Trudeau. We want an answer. This guy just, he doesn't do any actual work. He just walks around, takes photos with people. You're immoral. You're irrational. It's got to stop. We've got to stop you. Your lies, your corruption. It's got to stop. Stop the corruption. Stop the war machine. Stop your lies. You're a liar. You're a failure. You're a <laughs> That's got to be drilling down into him. <laughs> Did he set on a megaphone in the streets? Show your face in public. The guy in the megaphone was correct and concise. That's, uh, what's his name? Uh, he's out, always out in uh, Ottawa doing this. Give the man credit. He didn't try to confront the heckler like Mr. Singh. To be fair, Jagmeet works out and he knows martial arts. Justin Trudeau is just a weak little man. He's not confronting anyone because he can't beat up anyone. He's doing it to himself. I wonder when he'll crack. There's only so much someone can take of that before they, they finally break. Next up, we got this clip here of Ukraine giving Justin Trudeau a medal. <laughs> This is just, wow. By decree of the President of Ukraine, for outstanding personal contribution into strengthening interstate cooperation, supporting state sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, the Order of Freedom is awarded to Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. Great honor for me. Thank Order of so Freedom. Much. Thank you. This is the most disgraceful thing I've ever seen. Giving Justin Trudeau a medal while he puts our peoples out on the streets. President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. More things that you did with your team and with Canadian. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support and big help. Your... Thank you, Vladimir, but I, I accept this only on behalf of all Canadians who <laughs> have been 
as steadfast as you would want. Uh, we support you. Uh, we stand with you in this fight that is your fight, but that is uh, all of our fight for democracy, for sovereignty, for territorial integrity. Ugh. We got this clip here of Vassie Capellos and Karina Gould. This is ridiculous so Vassy keeps asking her about this uh, situation with the block the block wanting to make a deal with this pension um basically the it's a whole complicated thing but if you're over i think 74 or 75 they get this higher pension numbers in quebec and they want to make that available to 65 and older they're trying to do what they can for people of quebec i don't know why there's a federal party in canada that only wants to represent one province that seems ridiculous i don't think the block should even exist but that's what they're talking about here and karina gould She's asked so many different ways and she just will not say anything. And she starts to get noticeably annoyed. You'll see here. We're talking about something that a party has said they are willing to take your government down over, something you do have a voting record on, voting against, and something that would cost Canadian taxpayers an extra $3 billion a year. Your last budget was entitled Generational Fairness. Elderly benefits amount to $80 billion, far more than any of the benefits you're directing towards younger generations. Are you willing to trade trade off, I guess, younger Canadians in exchange for staying in power? Like, how far are you willing to go to stay in power? Oof, that is a great question. Oh, again, Bashi, as I said, I talk to all of my House leader counterparts uh, on an ongoing basis, even the Conservatives on a daily basis, uh, as we're managing the business of the House. So that's about all I can say uh, on this regard. So she has given that response, I think, five times now in this interview. I'm not going to play all of them for you guys because it's ridiculous. But just watch this. So you won't be equivocating a position. Can, can I interpret, for example, that your government voted against this PMB as its position on this, or you're just not going to tell Canadians where you fall on this because it involves you staying in power? Uh, I think those are assumptions that you are making um, and you're putting words in my mouth. But what I am saying <laughs> is that I am continually engaging with all of the House leaders on a wide variety of issues at all times. And that's just how minority parliaments work. Um, and those conversations happen on a regular basis. She's such a phony fake with a big fake smile. She's such a fake slippery snake, Karina Gould. Vassy is just trying to get something. Why would she come on if she's not going to answer anything? An update too, Pierre Polyev being the leader of the Conservatives gets to decide, you know, everything with the party and he's not having any more uh, Conservatives go on CTV after they, you know, they changed, they edited his words and changed a whole sentence to change a narrative of, you know, what he was saying about the dental, dental bill. So I would suspect the only person who, if they were to show up on Power Play or any one of these shows would be Andrew Scheer, but even then, maybe not him. Yeah, I'm certainly not trying to put words in your mouth, Minister. I'm trying to figure out on behalf of Canadians, if in a month you're going to decide to spend $3 billion a year on something that would mean you stay in power. And as I'm saying, my job is to continually engage with all of the House leaders of the different parties uh, on a wide variety of issues to make this parliament work, and that's what I'm going to do. I think that's number six or seven, seven time, seventh time she said that, that exact sentence almost. She just keeps saying she's going to engage with all the members, and that's it. Do you anticipate you'll be able to update Canadians on the progression of those discussions anytime soon? That is, uh, you know, something that we'll just have to see because there's many different things that we're talking about at all times. And my job is to continue to engage with all House leaders at all times um, on a whole wide variety of issues. Um, and that's the Bloc Québécois, that's the NDP, and it's even the Conservatives to Vassy should be asking her if she's got any plans to go home and be a mother, be a mother to her children and stop burdening Canadians with her presence in the House of Commons. There are seven opposition days, uh, five for the Conservatives, one for the Bloc and one for the NDP. And uh, as we do normally, uh, we'll keep rolling through them uh, in a kind of regular fashion. So just to update people, basically, most likely Pierre's going to put forward the same thing, you know, no confidence in the government. They'll vote on it again. Jagmeet and the Bloc will just vote with Trudeau and nothing's going to change. But um, the Bloc are starting to kind of put the, the boots to Trudeau's neck here. If they were smart, they would wait and, you know, keep kind of pressuring him, but still go vote with him until after February. So Jagmeet gets his pension because then Jagmeet might flip. That's when the Bloc has the ultimate amount of power. 
that's when they need to do it. They don't need to push it right now. They need to wait until they have the ultimate power. Once again, the bloc is a stupid party in Canada. It doesn't represent the majority of Canadians. It shouldn't exist. That cynical, condescending smile is nauseating, exactly. Such a disingenuous smile that Karina Gould's got. Karina Gould's own Burlington now is conservative safe for the next election. <laughs> She's out the door. Another smiling phony. I can't stand Karina Gould. She's a master at not answering the question. What a hypocrite. She's giddy and not answering any questions. How can anyone take this person seriously? Why is this woman smiling? Yeah, exactly. It's such a, like, fake... It's one of those... It's... Some people, either they're taught like that or it's just a, a fake smile to mask their emotions. Block has no place in the federal stage. It represents one province there, which should not be there. Exactly. Why is there a block party in this, this country? Next up, we've got uh, Randy Balsnow. Remember Randy? Or is this the other Randy? I don't know which Randy we're dealing with here today, but Randy goes on a big rant here about, <laughs> well, you'll see here, the whole uh, gay LGBTQ2 plus whatever. The, the comments that were made in the House of Commons yesterday, Trudeau blew it up. It's become a big stink now. Yeah, look, I'm happy to talk about the comments that were made in the House today. Clearly, the Conservative Party is the party that has real difficulty with queer people, 2S LGBTQ people in our rights. Look, I've dealt with this kind of discrimination and homophobic jokes my whole life. And, you know, when I came out, I had, I had friends who later said, look, we didn't know the effect this had on you growing up. And I think every Conservative MP needs to check themselves. That wasn't a homophobic joke. It hardly. The, the basically, they're talking about one of the conservatives said, this was Tr Trudeau having a, a bath with Tom Clark in the big golden bathtub or whatever in the $9 million NYC apartment. It's a bit of a stretch, guys. And on top of it, if you look at Pierre Polyev's deputy, Melissa Lanceman is gay herself. Is she not gay? I'm pretty sure. I'm 97% sure she is a female partner. Realize that they've got queer people in their writings. And that this is not a locker room from the 1980s. Would you like to see an apology for it? Absolutely. Look, somebody's being a coward. Somebody's hiding behind Parlview. Somebody is making a comment um, that's homophobic, and then a bunch of other people are laughing, and they're getting caught up in the, in the audio, and now when they're caught out, they're being a coward. So which of the Conservative MPs is the coward today? Let's have them stand up. Did you hear who it was? I did not hear who it was. I, was, I wrote a, was writing out a card to a constituent, and by the time I looked up, I couldn't peg who it was. But look, it's not cool. Like, look, take us, you know, we can talk about a $9 million uh, condo in New York that's saving Canadians money, that's going to help us represent <laughs> Canada in New York. <laughs> it's saving us money when we already had like a $6 million one. Sold that one, bought a $9 million one. Congratulations, everyone. We just saved $3 million somehow. Oh, geez, this guy. But that's not the time to have a homophobic slur thrown at anybody, no, non, nonetheless, the Prime Minister. I guess at the beginning, who said what? I, well, I wish I knew. And what I said <laughs> is there's a conservative coward out there hiding behind Harlview and the fact that we don't know who it is. And so if you're going to make a homophobic joke, come up to the microphone and say it so you can be tagged properly. But what's the homophobic joke? I think what was said was, did you jump in the bathtub with him? Referring to uh, Tom Clark and the Prime Minister. Did you jump in the bathtub with him? It's a bit of a stretch. So that's not cool. And so, like, this is the kind of locker room talk that belongs in the 1980s. I know because I was in those locker rooms. And I was the queer kid that had to hide. And so that's, like... Whoever that MP is, they've got queer kids in their riding. And what they're hearing from their MP is that they don't belong. What I heard about a bathtub was, does he engage with them in the bathtub? And he well, was referring to diplomats engaging with foreign leaders because Mr. Polyev had just spoken about the swap copper bathtub. The fact that it was the Prime Minister in an exchange with uh, the leader of the opposition, it was very clearly directed at the Prime Minister and our Consul General in New York. So that's not cool. And I th It does make a difference if... Do you engage with him in the bathtub is different than did you jump in the bathtub with him? I don't know. I couldn't hear it. I played the clip for you guys on the last video and all you could really hear is blah, 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 bathtub. I think what's more appalling about that session was that Trudeau called it a bunch of crap and then he rescinded his comment <laughs> and then he said I rescinded my comment about defecation. <laughs> Look, if they want to come and clarify what they said in crosstalk in the house, come to the microphone and own up to it. Thanks, everyone. Merci beaucoup. One last thing to note here about what he just said at the very, very end. Come to the microphone and own up to it. Come to the microphone and own up to it. Like the other Randy? Or which Randy are we talking about here? This guy is such a hypocrite. Captain PPE here has got his company a little self-serving making money, and he blames the other Randy, imaginary person. These guys are all a bunch of liars. It's not even hearsay because you couldn't hear what anyone had said.
This is all made up. Exactly. You can't really hear something about a bathtub. <laughs> Both Randys are struggling for moral high ground. Nice try. <laughs> How about Randy here asked the traders to stand up too? No kidding. Next up, we've got a clip here, which is very disturbing. I I'm not going to play the full clip. I'm going to play as minimal amount as possible. So I'm going to just let this play here without the audio for a second. So basically, we've got these guys with the, uh, the green, white, and red flags. They're doing their thing as usual. Now, what they say here, as you can see on the screen, we will continue fighting until Israel, America, and he says, and this country, he doesn't say Canada, but he says, and this country, crumbles to the ground. That is not something you utter in this country. This guy is a traitor to this country. He should not be here. So you can see this is the video. Now I'm going to play the audio, a small part of it for you without the video, but I'm just going to put this footage over top of it, which is the empty uh, UN that Trudeau is speaking to. We will continue fighting until the Zionist entity crumbles along with its accomplice, the United States, and this country crumbles to the ground. We this guy should get a job as a voice actor for video games, because... <laughs> I'm sorry, you talking about this country crumbles to the ground? I don't think you should be in this country. Not if you want to destroy it. This guy's not a Canadian. Why, why is he here? And they always have their face covered, so they can't be easily identified. We've got another liberal bonehead here, Melanie Jolie. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. Uh, this one posted by Cat Canada it says, uh, Foreign Affairs Minister uh, Melanie Jolie calls the Taliban to restore women's rights to education and to meaningfully participate in public life. <laughs> I can't even, it's just, it's, it's getting so stupid in this clown world. We're all aware of the global pushback against women and our human rights. And the increased threats faced by those who dare stand up and advocate and protect women, human rights. Digital technology may have increased freedom of expression, but it has also silenced voices. Over the last two days, foreign ministers from around the globe came together. We exchanged experiences and lessons learned, and we identified potential solutions for positive change. First, within the UN system, it is time for the next Secretary General to be a woman. And that was clearly called on uh, by all women foreign ministers. The UN has been existing for more than 75 years, so it is more than time. We also need better gender parity for the presidency of the UN General Assembly. And when it comes also to Afghanistan, we called on the Taliban to restore women and girls' rights to education and meaningfully participate in public life. So first off, Whoever's best for the job is the one who should be put in that job. If that's a woman, it's a woman. It shouldn't be like, well, it's time for a woman because we haven't had a woman there yet or whatever. Her talking about the Taliban? We called on the Taliban to restore women and girls' rights to educate. You're calling for the Taliban to restore rights. <laughs> this is so stupid. You realize they're a bunch of T-word people, right? Recall when the former MP for Peterborough referred to the Taliban as our brothers. The lack of realistic thinking by our elected never ceases to amaze me. They're going to take offense to that request. I'm sure the Taliban leaders are saying, I never thought about it that way. Thanks for showing us the air of our ways, Jolie. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. Jolie's all fluff, no substance. She's looking for votes from naive women. Yeah, that's basically it. Next up, we got this clip here, Stephen Guibault. He's uh, challenged by the reporter on his uh, climate action uh, plan. Uh, he doesn't like that question. Why do you think your climate plan is not resonating with Canadians? Well, it's much easier to say ax the tax and, and leave it at that than to explain to Canadians, well, climate change is real and we need to, do be, we need to be doing something about it. And this is one of the measures we've put in place and, and this is how it works. You can say acts attacks in 10 seconds. Explaining why we need to act on climate and, and how carbon pricing and the rebate works takes, is much more difficult. Acts attacks takes like two seconds to say. <laughs> First off, nobody's buying this garbage. The carbon tax is just a tax. The phrase carbon tax is just like calling it the elephant tax or the GST. It's just a tax. 
It doesn't do anything for the environment. If you actually want to do something for the environment, you guys would focus on planting billions of trees. So let's get real. You guys don't actually care about the environment. Uh, that being said, we, we've, we've shifted the way we, we talk about it. And we are seeing that more and more Canadians understand that they are getting the rebate, that, that it is helping them. And that's what we will continue doing in the coming but months. Minister, are you suggesting Canadians just don't get it? No, I'm saying it's a complex <laughs> issue. And it's been a comp I've been working it's on climate change. I've been I've been working on climate change for over 30 years, and and over those 30 years, many organizations have been working to help Canadians understand. And Canadians are no different than, than Europeans or Americans. It is a complex issue to understand. It'll be a nice day once this fool, also Adam Vancouver, and all these just boneheads are just tossed out of office. This has been the biggest scam in Canadian history. All this garbage, the carbon tax, the carbon rebate, all of it. So we got a guy here who posted a reply, which basically sums it up. This is in America, but it says, explain to us how the, how will the temperature go down because of our contribution? We emit 1.5% of the emissions in, in the world. This clip here comes from the American government, but they're basically challenging them on this exact thing. $50 trillion, as some of your colleagues have testified, to become carbon neutral by 2050. How much is that going to lower world temperatures? So every country around the world needs to get its act together. Our emissions are about 13% of global emissions. Yeah, but if you could answer my question, if we spend $50 trillion to become carbon neutral in the United States of America by 2050, you're the Deputy Secretary of Energy, Give me your estimate of how much that is going to reduce world temperature. So, so first of all, it's a net cost. Um, it's what uh, benefits we're having from getting our act together and reducing all of those climate benefits. We're seeing Let me ask again. Maybe I'm being right now. Maybe I'm not being clear. If we spent fifty trillion dollars to become carbon neutral by two thousand and fifty in the United States of America, how much is that going to reduce world temperature? This is a global problem, so we need to reduce our emissions, and we need to do everything we can. How much, if we do our Other part, is it going to reduce? So we're per, we're thirteen percent of global emissions. You don't know, do you? So we're thirteen percent of. If global you know, why won't you we, tell me? If we went to zero, that would be thirteen percent. You don't know, do you? You just want us to spend fifty trillion dollars, and you don't have the slightest idea whether it's going to reduce world temperatures. You're the deputy secretary of the Department of Energy, and you're advocating we spend trillions of dollars to seek carbon neutrality and you can't and this isn't your money and my money it's taxpayer money and you can't tell me how much it's going to lower world temperature wow yeah he got roasted there jumping over to my group let's see what memes we've got today we've got this one here it says doug ford says he wants to build a tunnel under the 401 highway of heroes <laughs> yeah i guess he wants to build that from what was it uh, brampton to scarborough i'm sure it's possible to build an underwater tunnel like this but not in canada things just don't get done in canada Nor norway sure china yep not canada and i thought self-checkout at walmart was bad self-cemetery <laughs> <laughs> Trudeau's made program. Liberals quietly announced new pandemic preparedness agency, Health Emergency Readiness Canada. Money making scheme is what that is. The best stimulus package would be a 0% income tax. Yeah, that's not going to happen around here. Takes a special kind of stupid to want another four years of what we just had. No kidding. If I only had a brain. If I had balls. <laughs> Another day of Justin Trudeau getting heckled and humiliated. How many more will it take for the guy to just step down? I don't think he will, because if you think about it, let's just do the math real quick. He makes 400 and something, $405,000 a year, something like that. $406,200. That's what he makes right now. If you take $406,200 divided by 365 days, he's making... <laughs> <laughs> he's making $1,100 a day. He's not stepping down. He's going to squeeze that for every day it's worth. That's crazy that we're paying that schmuck that much money. Not to mention all the stuff he gets paid for him, you know, re reimbursements and all this stuff, $10,000 on a private maid and all, or chef and whatever it was, thousands of dollars in groceries, free flights everywhere. He's not giving that up. So really, Canadians just need to keep doing what we're doing here. Keep heckling that guy. Make it known that we're unhappy with his policies. Make him feel uncomfortable when he's on the streets because he is ruining our country. At some point, the guy's going to crack because he's starting to crack in the House of Commons. So it's only a matter of time before he cracks on the streets and the guy leaves.